Welcome back to the channel. We're now looking at how to format your code in Visual Studio Code. Now, by default, Visual Studio Code doesn't actually know what to do with Hugo templates. It gets really messy. So I'm going to assume we've got the latest version of Hugo and Visual Studio Code set up. And I've got my Hugo installation video in the link above. So we're going to have a look at how to install the Prettier VS Code plugin. We're then going to look at installing Prettier and the Prettier Go plugin into a project. And then we're going to create a configuration file to configure Prettier to format your Hugo template files. So first up, I'm going to open up the terminal in a folder I'd like to work in. I'm then going to go about creating a new Hugo project. So what we'll do is run Hugo new theme and we'll call it Hugo formatting. It's actually going to be a project name. And then we're going to do a little trick here themes dir and we're going to use a dot for the current directory and then we'll go to that folder and we'll open it up in vs code and then you have a look in your layouts folder and you'll see that it's actually been pre-populated with a blank theme so we've not only created a project we've also created a um, theme at the same time so we're now ready to go so first thing I'm going to do is install the Prettier plugin. So I'm running a brand new profile here on Visual Studio Code. So there's no settings in here at all. You may find you want to create a new profile. So if we go to the settings in the bottom left and then go to profile and then create profile, you might want to create yourself a profile just for Hugo. That way you haven't got too many plugins building up and getting in the way. Then we go to extensions and we'll search for Prettier. And we've got to put that top one in there with 47.9 million installs. Now we're going to set this up Prettier so it just formats your Hugo files. And consequently HTML as well. So that's been installed. Now I've got to go about installing some software into your project. So open a new terminal and we'll run npm init because we're going to be using npm to install the dependencies and if you keep hitting enter you'll be accepting the defaults it's not a really big deal because we're not going to be publishing uh, this to the npm repository as it's actually a, a website we're building not an npm package you'll now have a file called package.json and it's really not that important um, what's there. We're going to be adding some software in a second. So I'm on the NPM page for the Prettier plugin Go template. And I'll leave a link to that in the description below. We're going to be installing both Prettier and the Prettier plugin Go template. The, you need to have Prettier installed as well. So we'll copy that. And then we'll pack it into our terminal. Now, a little trick, you may or, may or may not be a fan of this, but there is a variation called PNPM, and you'll have to have that installed to start with. Um, it doesn't work out of the box. And what PNPM does is it only downloads the dependencies once, and then it saves a copy of them on your computer. And rather than installing the dependencies into your project, it will install them onto your computer, and it will create a link from your project to the single installation of that dependency. So you're not doubling up every time you work on a different project. You're only actually downloading the dependency once. So I'll let that run through. And you'll notice it says downloaded zero, and that's because it, I've already downloaded these packages before. So I'm not adding any extra files to my computer. I'm not using up storage. If we go into our node modules folder, um, you'll see their symbolic links. Um, these folders here to Prettier and also the Prettier plugin Go template, which I think is a, a pretty cool thing. It's not exactly the same as NPM. It does have a few quirks, but it is worth looking into. We've now got to configure 
prettier. So at a basic level, we have to tell we have to create our prettier RC file and tell prettier which plugin to use. But that will not work for Hugo templates because Hugo templates sit within HTML files and prettier won't be picking up that. So if you look up the top, you see it works with go HTML, go templates, go templates, template, tpl, html, tmpl, but it won't work with HTML by default. And I think that's a good thing that it's been written like that. But we have to put some extra information there. Now I'm just showing you how to set this up only for go templates. If you're going to use prettier for other things, you'll have to create a bigger configuration. It's going to get a little more complex. So back in our project, create a new file in the root of your project dot prettier RC. We'll paste that in there. Notice VS Code is not so happy about a few of the things. Which is surprising considering it's a um, a pretty plugin. Um, we'll take out these trailing commas. It's not happy about in the JSON file, and then we'll save that. Go into your layouts folder and and pick one of the the files that's already there, and make a bit of a mess of it, and then use Alt Shift F to format. Um, I'm in a brand new profile here, and it's saying we've got multiple formatters available for HTML because we've installed Prettier. And I'm going to choose Prettier, and you'll notice it's now formatting it really nicely. So make a few more changes or tab that in, and you'll see it pulls it all back quite nicely. And that's because we've got our pretty configuration here um, to say that if it's HTML, then you've got to send it through um, the Go template plugin. Previously, you didn't have to actually specify the plugins. They were automatically detected, but from version three onwards, you have to. And that's why I've created this new video. So that's it for this week's video. All the best with setting up Visual Studio Code. Remember, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit that bell notification button so you get notified of my regular videos that are coming out for modern front-end web development technologies, uh, quite often static web design and Hugo. And make sure you subscribe to the channel.